Welcome to the Mindset Podcast presented by Cuts Clothing. So guys, I want to give you each the chance to win a $500 gift card presented by Cuts. All you have to do is go to my Instagram at davidmead411, find the latest Cuts post and follow the instructions to be in the running. I've told you guys before and I'll tell you guys again, these are one of my favorite brands of clothing of all time. If I won the $500, I'll be getting myself some caps, a couple of t-shirts, the jogger pants, you definitely got to get the jogger pants and a couple of other accessories on there. So again, guys, go to my latest Instagram cuts post, follow the instructions, get yourself in the running, and even if you don't win, you can still enter David Mead 15 at checkout to get 15% off your total order. All right, let's get into the episode. Shay, you just got back from the World Cup recently. We'll talk a bit, a bit about that, but we trained together in Balimba about a year ago. Time you, last year, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you, me, Therese, Isaac, Luke, yep. a couple of the Wyndham lads. Yeah. So uh, we got a, we did a fair bit of training. Uh, you showed a lot more heart than what I probably anticipated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> um, but you've done pretty well this year. You got to the World Cup with the Orchids. Mm-hmm. How was that experience? Honestly, that was incredible. Um, the UK, the the girls coming over, meeting each other. Um, prior to that, we got to the PM13. So that was the first initial meeting with the whole squad together. And then we were with each other for a, a week. Everyone went back home for two weeks. And then we met at the airport again two weeks later. And we were off. So <laughs> What was England like? Had you been there before? I don't know if I can say it was cold because we got it was drilled into us before we left that we weren't allowed to talk about Co- the weather. Coaches are supposed to say it. They say <laughs> yeah. it all the time. If you go to PNG, don't say it's hot because it'll play on your mind. Yeah, exactly. If you exactly. go to England, don't say it's cold because it'll just be it'll play on you. your mind. It'll make you weaker. It's you can acknowledge the weather. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> like it's funny that though because when we first got there, everyone was like, oh no, like it was, it was anticipated that it was going to be freezing. But then we were just, yeah, it's, especially because of cold. the PNG girls, <laughs> like coming from their climate. Like I know we live in sunny Queensland, but you know, they come to Australia and they're like, this is cold, like this weather. And then having to go over to England. Yeah. Um, we knew that was, that we were, might have, you know, have the possibility of struggling with that. But honestly, we were walking around with like just jeans and a shirt and maybe a jumper over the top. But then... Every time we went to training and hit the field, it was freezing. Yeah. Like <laughs> we could not, we were like rocking up in like massive jackets, <laughs> like beanies on, everything, and then having to take it all off. And then yeah, like the warm up would basically be like the whole session because you're trying to still warm up. Yeah, it's hard though, isn't it? You, you're over there and you're, you're trying to think of the weather. You're like, I'm mentally tough. Yeah. The weather's not going <laughs> to yeah. play on me. <laughs> trying the to coach, convince yourself, the like, coaches told me this. that you know. <laughs> yeah, coaches told me. Don't show weakness. By, yeah, you know, pretty much. The and then, like, you find comfort in saying things like that, and you're yeah. like, "Can't, can't say that it's cold today." <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I've, I've met Benny, the coach, before, and you know, he's, he's doing his job. Yeah, I thought he did a good job with his actually. Definitely uh, uh, putting the squad together and going there, but you know, I think it's part of his job to say that. Yeah. Don't acknowledge the uh, conditions because yeah. it'll play on your mind, and, and it does. Yeah, it does to a lot of people, but yeah. It was. It was. Um. You know. Don't sort of like these are things that we can't change so yeah. we just gotta run with it and yeah you can't really control <clears throat> i think a lot of the coaches will talk about we just talk about what we can control yeah what we can't control we just the uncontrollable. don't worry about yeah. it yeah uh but so england was cold first time experience first time experience yeah, yeah. and how the other girls like it outside the the weather, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoyed it we were lucky we stayed in a park called leeds which had like a city center and we, you know, the we'd go shopping a lot. The yeah. girls, the PNG girls. Um, yeah, no, we all really enjoyed it. We got to do a few things. Um, we were f- about four hours out of London, and then we had a weekend away as a team. Um, I think it was the first week we got there because we were there for a duration of six. So yeah, we were lucky to have a weekend away, and we got to travel by bus, our team bus, um, to London and experience that. The Eiffel. I mean, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Don't cut that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Big Ben. The Big Ben. The Big Ben. The, the clock, um, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then the um, the Eye, yep. the London Eye. So we all went on that and that the whole good, tourist thing. It's been a good weekend. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was beautiful. You know, I lived in France for three years. So England was our every, uh, trip away every second week. Yeah. We enjoyed Leeds, Manchester. Did you say Manchester? 
We did. Um, yeah. Just a bunch of us because we had a free weekend um, and some of us got tickets to Manchester City. Oh, yeah. And went yeah. and watched the football. Yeah. And, yeah, that, that was... a cool experience. That was amazing. Like, the atmosphere is, like, second to none. And, like, I didn't think because I've never watched soccer or football before, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for those that are watching. No, it is a uh, yeah, it's a different ex- uh, experience over there. Mm-hmm. I know league. No one knows really league compared to soccer over there. Yeah, you no, get five thousand fans at a league game. It feels like thirty thousand over here. Yeah, you can only imagine the soccer over there getting the fifty, sixty thousand plus. It's crazy. Fans. It, it is an electric experience. We we kind of got there a teeny bit late, and we sat down, and because you can only buy tickets in twos. And we sat down and I was with my mum and the whole crowd jumped up and we, her and I were just sitting down <laughs> and we were like, oh, better get up. <laughs> yeah, follow everyone else. Yeah, we but then after we were place. following the ball and we were up and down with the crowd. So <laughs> Yeah, that would have been a good experience. It was. Uh, so your mum was there to watch her yes. your, uh, ex- uh, play for the Orchids. Yes. That would be a good experience for her. It proud was. moment. Yeah, her, um, my mum and my dad came over. Um, so I was really lucky to have them both there in support. My mum is actually from London. She was born in London. So that was an experience in itself to experience being there, you know, obviously representing, I guess, two sides of my heritage, like being Im- immersed in a place where she grew up and then being able to represent my father through being there with the World Cup. Like that yeah. was... That was pretty incredible. That would have been a cool experience. Yeah. Too. Did they, have, they share any tears off, oh. the, off the field? <laughs> I, I don't know if I can say this. <laughs> Dad might watch this and be like, why? <laughs> but um, they, I think I'd only been gone for like a week and a half, maybe, because they were two weeks. Let's say two weeks. Give him that. And um, it was our first jersey presentation against Canada. The first game? Yeah. yeah. First game against Canada. They just rocked up for the jersey presentation. I unfortunately put, um, tore my quad um, in the training session in lead up to that. Mm-hmm. So then I got – because I, I got – I had a talk. He, the coach spoke to me and said I'd, he'd wanted to put me at full back. So I was really excited. And then obviously this happened. I think it was five days prior to that game. So then I got pulled out and then mum and dad – rocked up which I didn't know that they were coming to that jersey presentation because I was sitting out I kind of was in the in my own little world a bit a bit sad but yeah. obviously happy for the girls that had been named yeah. yeah um and then they walked in and then I was a little bit sad and then he seen me and then he got a little bit like and my dad does not show <laughs> any emotion <laughs> so then I was like suck it up dad you're gonna make me cry and doesn't look good <laughs> but um yeah I think that was probably the only I, mean, I don't know if it was him see, not seeing me for two weeks. Yeah. Did you know they were coming over to England? I did know that they were coming, but okay, I didn't so know they were going to be there at that. Yeah. yeah they kind of just rocked up and was like, surprise. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, no, at the games, like I, I, I think they don't show it to me, but they're definitely sitting there with a lot of... I'm support. sure they'd be yeah. very proud. <laughs> uh, you know. Not, not so much not tears, but I mean, it's more, yeah, happy. happy. Uh, oh, yeah. Good emotional. Good emotional. Experience, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it would be for any parent seeing their kid represent their their country of origin, and yeah, it's always a special moment, not just for the player, but family, friends. Yeah, I think parents especially because they've seen you. Yeah, I mean, go they through everything. So they did tell me multiple times how proud they were. So I was really lucky, you know, to have them there and tell me that in person. So oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah, maybe I'd need to get your dad on the podcast to talk yeah. about his experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, it'll just be weather, weather, weather. Yeah. <laughs> I think we spoke off uh, Mike earlier. I did an interview uh, before the game at the Prime Minister's game. Yeah. Try to speak to him and he did not want to <laughs> look at the camera. <laughs> Apparently he spotted you though and he kind of come up to you and was like, hey, yeah. <laughs> And didn't then what, he didn't, didn't talk to interview. you? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, no, that was fun. That was a fun day. But, uh, you know, playing against the... Jilla Roos mm-hmm. in the Prime Minister's 13. Mm-hmm. What was that experience like in terms of the game intensity and Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm lucky that I play with a lot of those girls through the BHP competition and either with or against. Um, so I kind of personally I knew what we were going up against. But I think the way Coach Ben 
like described us and like brought it kind of brought us together because we'd only been together for a duration of a week um we were just you know shaking hands saying hello to one another at that point so going into a game like that we he kind of took all the expectations off us um he was like it doesn't matter about the result this is just about you guys gelling um so you know going into a game like that you'd kind of be really nervous and kind of thinking about okay what's the result going to be what's the outcome but you know he kind of just took that all off us and we it was basically just going out there and having a run together and getting to know a little bit more about each other before obviously going into our training sessions like quite heavily but yeah I mean we we took that on board and going into the world cup we obviously you know yeah, yeah <laughs> sorry. I, mean, I, I did watch the games. Um, you know, I, th- I thought you did pretty well, considering the amount of you know, experience that the PNG team has compared to say yeah. Australia, New Zealand, even some other countries. And I, I know it's a very uneven playing field at the moment, just because you know there's the main competitions here in Australia. Mm-hmm. Majority of the Orchids team is made up from PNG, and when you don't have the that experience, yeah, I think even like the local Brisbane. Comp, that's mm-hmm. a step above what's happening in PNG in terms yes. of competition experience. Yes. The effort's there, definitely in competition in PNG. Mm-hmm. But when you bring experience in, it's a very, it's a much easier to gel as a team than it is when you have you know minimal experience because you know you yeah. got to try and make sure you get all your off field stuff right. Exactly. Especially you know time. Yes. Time's a big one. Off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Our off field. I think your field experience is. More I mean, you know, not taking away from the game, but it's more important in creating that platform when you are on the field. So, you know, given like what you just said, like having like not as much experience. And I mean, I know you can do so much on your own in your individual way, but when you come together as a team, like it's basically starting again because you yeah. kind of want to work out how to, like you know pass this. That, you want to pass that um, information and knowledge on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've got to like find that common ground and then start from there. Um, so I kind of think that's what the PM's game was for us is to figure out that common ground so that we could move forward into the World Cup Yeah, with our campaign. And so how did you find the intensity of the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, score aside. Yeah. In no, terms put of the like, score aside. Yeah, yeah. In terms of like say you running the ball, getting tackled, yeah. is that different to – much different to the local um, games that you play? Honestly – the competition that we play in, BHP, I think any one of those girls could be up in that, like up there. So, I mean, going from that to that type of comp, I mean, from left to right, you've got the world's best. Yep. So, it's obviously a little bit higher than in with in regards to, you know, contact and yep. speed of the game and skill set. Um, but, I mean, I've had some pretty big hits from in, other in girls local in the comp. local yeah. comp yeah so, so i'd give the intensity of that full credit so to the different. girls in the local comp also yeah. yeah i mean i guess you know i think when you find yourself well this is what i found anyway at a pretty pretty young age i, mm-hmm. I was 19 when i debuted for Cornwalls mm-hmm. against england and then new zealand and then australia so when i got exposed to that i feel like that's kind of like a make or break for someone because if you don't step up to it then it can break you pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, that's like bang, bang, bang. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like I was pretty lucky in the sense to experience intensity of the game at that level. So mm-hmm. then it makes you think, oh, you I, need, I need to get a lot better here because yeah. they are a lot better than I am and I need to train as hard as I can just to get even close yeah, to them. So definitely it puts a the benchmark there for you. Yeah, so yeah. I, th- I think that experience will be not just good for you but all the girls moving forward. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, in, and in terms of the World Cup, played three games over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was it three games or four? Um, in total, we had four games because um, we made it to the semifinals. So the semi was the fourth game? Yes. Yep. Correct. Um, how was that? How did you find that the, the lead up to it? Um, our approach was the same for all the games. Like we, we were very lucky that our game plan didn't ever change. So every time we rocked up to training, we knew what we were doing. I think – like given the duration, like we were only like our campaign is is off the back end of two months together, mm-hmm. so there's not really a lot of movement which you can do. Um, so we kind of, in regards to our game plan not changing, it was just about making little, like little changes to make 
yourself individually improve like and then coming together collectively like that like it wasn't okay this happened in this game let's do this differently here like it was like it's okay like stick to it like it'll come like our opportunity will come um and yeah I I think that worked really well because again it took the pressure off us and we made it to the semi-final on that yeah I I thought you did really well to make it to the semis and it to be honest, from 2017, uh, the difference in, you know, just energy levels for from the uh, group collectively mm-hmm. is very not- noticeably different to uh, today. So it's been a huge uh, step in the right direction for yeah. the Orchids. So I think, you know, just imagine five, uh, is it three more years to the next World Cup? Yeah, in mm-hmm. France. Three more years. I think you know, as long as everyone's training hard, there's good systems in place. Uh, the coaching's improved. Players are training hard. More yeah. pool of players to choose from. Yes. To, to increase that competition. Yes. I think the orchids are moving in the right direction. Yeah. We, um, in saying that, we had videos being sent to us from home and and there was a few comments in there saying that you've encouraged my little sister or you've encouraged me to go and play. So that pool that you talk about, it, I can only imagine how much bigger that's gotten since yeah. that. Oh, man, I got goosebumps here and <laughs> there. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. You would have seen some of the passion showed back home i mean you've experienced that before right you've seen the passion that people in png yes show about their rugby <laughs> what are your thoughts yes. on that i actually have a, a video and there's i mean i know we speak about the whole men and women thing but there's this, the video and it's men from left to right a whole group of them and there's just go the orchids <laughs> like to have that compared to you know when we first only, yeah, only five years ago yeah, not, yeah i don't think that. to see that was I think it put tears and on the whole like groups, yeah, because it was on the big like on the big screen and then yeah that was you yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't ever see like you know back in two thousand seventeen that wouldn't be no the case. well there was um, like, empty plastic bottles getting thrown on the field at the girls you know telling them to go home deserve to be should stay in the kitchen yeah clean up that type of stuff yeah I think culturally there's been a huge shift you know, mm-hmm. made by the orchids more so than any other sporting teams in PNG, just because of you know, the game's growing in Australia, mm-hmm. uh, New Zealand, across the world. So, mm-hmm. But for PNG to have the women's team represented on the world stage and you know talk about these things, it's going to shift the culture massively yeah. uh, and in a positive direction, I think. Yeah. It is well known that you know men and women don't have equal rights across the country, just in terms of the way... People are treated, and you know, just the way the culture's been over years. Yeah, those learn experiences. Yeah, there's been huge. So, the orchids is such a you know powerful vehicle to make create some good changes. Some so, change. And I think that's going to transfer over to other mm-hmm. areas. So, in the corporate space, I know the yeah. corporate space is doing a big job in terms of uh, bringing up more uh, women leaders you know, in several areas. Mm-hmm. So, doing a great job there. But I think in terms of across the country. Not everyone gets to see what people are doing in the office, yeah. but everyone gets to see what uh, you girls are doing on the field. So yeah. I think that's going to help the country as a whole. I mean, I don't want to like talk about the the negative responses that you have on social media, but it's an. Oh, I will get to that. I want to talk about that. Yeah. yeah, if you if you want to talk about negative stuff. Yeah, I, w- yeah. I, w- I wouldn't want to harp on it, but um, it was incredible to see how quickly it shifted from negative to positive, mm-hmm. and like obviously. It, it was through a game of rugby league. Like for that one thing to create such a massive shift was a little bit m- like, you know, it, I don't know. I don't know. Mind how, blowing, how, yeah, yeah. mind blowing. Like yeah. to. It, it is strange, isn't it? Yeah. Just seeing one person have a complete belief attitude about something and then be like, oh, Actually, no. Nah. Yeah. I should change that. Yes. And it was of just off the back of a win of a rugby league game. Like yeah. to have that kind of power off through a game where it's women who are taking the field. Like I can only imagine like in that in six weeks, like I can only imagine what can be done if we continue to pro- like progress off the back of that. Yeah. And what, you know, the, the like, I don't, you know. Yeah, I mean, you see it over... Yeah, you, know, you can only imagine what it will do over a couple of decades. Exactly. But you know, even the Australian sporting, you know, women's sports, 
space. There's a lot of you know positive, negative stuff that's been talked about, but mm-hmm. the spotty, uh, the the positive stuff is there's involvement. You know, you're active, you're healthy, mm-hmm. and regardless of whether you make it to the top or not, you, everyone should play sport anyway. Yeah, I think it's just bec- when it comes to in terms of you know talking revenue dollars and stuff like that, making comparisons. That's where we run into a little bit of issues. Mm-hmm. But in terms of who has the right to take the field where everyone watches, no, no one else gets to decide about the person taking the field. So mm-hmm. I think you should all hold your heads up high for, I wouldn't even say, say brave. I'd just say for doing what you love doing, you know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, there is bravery to it because it's a physical game. <laughs> but you also love it and so that's, exactly. that's why you're playing it. And exactly. And I see some of the women fighting there in the UFC. I'm like, man, I would not want to get punched oh. in the face. <laughs> <You mean? laughs> Why are they, you know? <laughs> yeah, but there is a huge cultural shift. And in, in Australia, it's, it's still moving in the right direction. Yes. Now you see like some vile comments on social media towards some of the women just because of the, you know, the way they're built. Yeah. And you're going to get that everywhere. Yeah, it's uh, inevitable. You all can't the time. control But that. I think in terms of PNG, we need to – a huge focus there to change that attitude. Definitely. And orchids is a, I think, more powerful vehicle than you know the kumuls because everyone already loves the kumuls. Yes. You, you get flogged by eighty points. I'll Doesn't go matter. the kumuls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, orchids or any other team get flogged. No, they should stay yeah. home. Yeah. So they're doing a great job. Thank you. Hey guys, just going to take a quick break from this episode. I want to mention Cuts Clothing. They've been a sponsor of mine for a couple of months now and now they're sponsoring the episode. So I just want to talk a little bit about them. So these guys make elite apparel for the modern professional. As you can see, I've got the polo on, the cap. I enjoy wearing them every day and I like to put myself in that modern professional category. And so every cut shirt is designed to provide a perfectly tailored fit. Plus Cuts has all the essentials for looking sharp like tees, polos, caps, hoodies, and more, so you can look and feel good no matter what the occasion is. Now, I wouldn't say I know too much about fashion, but one thing I do know is that Cuts have mastered the art and science of perfecting the men's tees. I wear these shirts for meetings, podcasting, catching up with friends at a cafe or a restaurant, or just when I'm at home spending time with my family. And because you guys are mindset listeners, Cuts have allowed me to give you guys 15% off your total order. Head to cutsclothing.com that's c-u-t-s clothing.com and enter david mead 15 at checkout all right let's get back into the episode moving forward you, you hurt your um collarbone yes but you played out the you know i'll give you a wrap here you played the whole the rest <laughs> of the game so it must be pretty tough i don't know if that's a png or english blood yeah they, <laughs> yeah <laughs> give credit to the blood yeah of the yeah. png because i know how Hey, tough they can be. I've played against uh, English lads. They're tough as nails. Yes. Too, there, so. yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so you hurt your collarbone. It's a six-month recovery, five, six-month recovery. Yeah, period. about five, six months. So I um, broke it in 2020 in the grand final playing for South against Burley. Um, again, I did that at the very beginning. Mm. I <laughs> actually – I'd never really done anything other than my knee, which was years prior to that. So I did it and then – I was speaking, Amelia Cook was my centre because I was playing on the wing at that time. And I was like, Lars, I think I've done something to my arm. <laughs> She's like, no, you're fine. Like, keep going. I was like, okay. And I just kept running up and down the sideline. And then I was like, no, Lars, I think it's a stinger. And I've never even <laughs> had a stinger before. <laughs> and I was like, no, I think it's that. And she's like, oh, okay, then you'll be right then. And then, but in my head, I was like, I hope nobody runs my way. <laughs> and then I, I, yeah, they, the doctors because it was the grand final, so we had all the QRL doctors there and they're like, you can get off the field. And then it turns out I did break my collarbone. Um, so I had a plate in there since then for two years and then I was lucky enough to get named at fullback for that game. <laughs> Maybe I should have been named at fullback because <laughs> each time I got injured. Yeah, just get named at, front, that. <laughs> get named at front row and then you'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> just take it front row. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, because of the plate that was in there, it kind of broke on the inside of that and then... That was in the eighth minute. I think it was my first tackle. I just come across recover tackle and then made that and then got up and was like, oh, and then just get playing. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of pain a, there. I'm not going to oh, not say yeah, that. It's, but it's painful. It's, uh, 
I did mine under 15s. Mm-hmm. I told the story before, but yeah, it's it's not a. I mean, you break, you know, you hurt your fingernail, that hurts. <laughs> yeah. Imagine breaking a collarbone. <laughs> yeah. huh? I think um, there was so much adrenaline that I, it kind of just went out of sight, like out of mind. I, yeah, they kept, the doctors were coming on and they were like, oh, you, you're right. And I was like, yeah, there's like shooting pain up and down my arm, but they're, they're like, can you make it to half time? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> got to half time and then they assessed it and they're like no it's fine <laughs> and then, yeah so I was like okay and then um they actually I don't know if I can say this but they gave me a needle to like numb because they thought it was nerve pain yeah and I was like hitting on the old plate and it might have just moved or something and then I was like okay and then it didn't help at all but just kept playing and then yeah full time and then <laughs> found out it was broken yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's when you're tough, Jace. <laughs> it's when you know you're tough. Uh, you know, I know blokes who have come off the field because they, you know, little twinge or a little tickle in the rib. So you're you're up there with toughness, Jace. Oh, I'd say adrenaline, yeah. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of your recovery and then next game, mm-hmm. when are you looking at come back? Um, I actually went down to South training uh, on Wednesday. I was their last training session. I just wanted to go in and see the girls. And Maya, who was there, she's been really good. She'd watched pretty much my whole journey while I was at the World Cup and then kept um, checking in on me. So I just wanted to go and say thanks and Happy New Year. And then, um, obviously I told her, like, I might not, I might miss the season because of this. And then, yeah, she just said to stay around the game so yep. i might just like run some water on and stuff so yeah. no, I, th- I think that's important eh? just be part of the group still yeah moving forward yeah i'm not i'm not really looking at my at my return at the moment i'm kind of just focusing on my recovery and yep. hoping hopefully you know get back as soon as i can but my main focus is just recovery yeah and in terms of growing up did you grow up your local brisbane mm-hmm. yes yep. born and, and raised born brisbane. and raised in brizzy yeah what was that like <laughs> Beautiful weather, opposite yeah. to cold. <laughs> <laughs> Any siblings? Yes, I have one sister. Um, she's just older than me, four years difference. Born yeah. on the same day. Is she rough you up a bit? <laughs> no, actually, no. I don't know how I got into rugby league considering it's such a, uh, you know, it's a physical game. Yeah. But our rule growing up was you weren't allowed to put your hands on each other. Oh, really? <laughs> So so you're, you're rebelling now. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm releasing all that built up tension from when yeah. I was a child. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no, we, yeah, we weren't allowed to put each other, our hands on each other. <laughs> um, I come from a really big family, so I have one sibling, but I've got a lot of cousins and dad's side, mum's side. Yeah, so my father moved over here, um, in '75. Um, been here ever since and my mum also came over from England when she was quite young so they met here in Brisbane and then like all their family are here so yeah I grew up with everybody everybody yeah, everybody, yeah. yeah. oh that's cool <laughs> had a lot of big sisters <laughs> yeah <laughs> that were cousins that just yeah I'm the youngest of the first generation so I was the baby of the family yeah nice yeah got looked after really well <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's so good to grow up in that community environment with your family, cousins. Mm. Yeah, very lucky. Yeah, so I think it's such a good experience having that. So I try to do that with my kids as well. My brother's just moved from PNG. Yeah, wow. Brought his tribe over, three of them, and we're always looking for babysitters. So drop these two kids off and yeah, then, you know, I go for uh, coffees and lunches, yeah, your date nights and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and in terms of. Going back to PNG, you've been there a couple of times now? Um, I've been there three times now for touch football and then for rugby sevens. Um, and then for a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have a holiday? KVAing. Okay, I haven't been there yet. Mm, yeah. That's stunning, yeah. yeah. It's just a little island up the top. So, yeah. Got to uh, catch a little seaplane and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little. Like, yeah. Did you, um, you go around Moresby much? Yeah. Yeah. Is, I was, is that I was, where you play the competition? Yeah, That's I was yeah. based in Port Moresby for those competitions. Uh, how'd you find that experience? They were wonderful experiences. I um, the first time round I went, it was we were representing Australia, like an Australian PNG team that went over there. Um, and then with that we had polar opposite experiences because we had security with us, and if you went here, you had to take a buddy and a security guard, and um, so. 
kind of didn't really understand that. Um, not because obviously you're walking around and everyone's so friendly and, but there was just always that thing in the back of your head that they kind of drilled into you while we were there. And then the second time I went was for the PNG sevens team. We were, um, training for the Olympic qualifier and total opposite. We would just, we'd get picked up in a, in our little team van, I guess you could say, and we'd go do the rounds and pick everybody up and it was still dark. And so like, having the experience where it was like security guard with you to just driving around at 5 a.m. in the morning to like all the different nooks and crannies of Port Moresby. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I had two different experiences. but Yeah, it, it's, a, yeah it's a strange one, isn't it? Yeah. When people talk about PNG, the first thing that comes to mind is safety. Yes. And when you're there and you're driving around, everything's just fine. Yes. It's just you just hear about it on the news all the time. Yeah. I've never really seen any like a fear physical violence or anything like that. No. I and mean, I've seen the odd, you know, people get around because yeah, there's just an a argument. Yeah. But I've never actually seen the or physical fight, which, which actually happens. But, yeah, it's just yeah. my experience there is very different to how yeah. people see it through the media. Yes, most definitely. I mean, you only see me. I've only seen the physical on the field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> through a couple of tackles here and there. But, yeah, yeah I've never seen it on the street. <laughs> Yeah, and the, and that experience of you know getting there and you need a security guard to get from here to there. Just I to know go to the toilet, like that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what it was for. Like <laughs> you're going to the toilet, take a security guard, but yeah, you know, I didn't. oh, true, oh, I've never had that. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not into the yeah. toilet, but <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, such a strange thing because I'll go there with different groups. You sit down, there's a security briefing. Mm -hmm. There's normally like. 10 security guards with the company and I'm, I'm norm I'll normally sit there and just observe everyone's reaction yeah. and with the security guards. You, you, you're seeing them and the guys, the main guys going, all right, don't go to this. Yes. When this happens, you know, get down uh, undercover, get in the van, shut the door, you know, yeah. all that type mm -hmm. of briefing. So he'll be up there trying to emphasize the importance of the message and I'm looking around and going. <laughs> and then they're like, where's David? <laughs> and you were over there. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> 100 meters away. Grab my coffee, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. And so when I see them, they're just like, oh, I've heard this a thousand times, you know. Yeah. It, it's not really – it is important. Yes. But it's not like how it's made out to made be. Out, yeah. There's always a big emphasis on Yeah, and Sunil's been there 15 times. Yeah. Never felt unsafe. Yeah. So and, – and don't get me wrong. there You do need to be careful, mm -hmm. not naive. Yeah. But that's kind of like anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just always have to have your, you know, be wary of your surroundings. But yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's and uh, we went to the village with these guys as well, the security guards mm -hmm. and stuff. And just a little bit off topic, no, but I thought I'd share me. it because yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I went with this ABC film crew to the village, mm -hmm. and so these guys are pretty like you know, you got to do everything right because it's government and you know, yeah politically correct, mm -hmm. that type of stuff, that type of mentality. Mm -hmm. And so the two security guards, when we got to the school, one of them had spoken to the one of the teachers, mm -hmm. and this is my village, and then we didn't clue on to who it was. Yeah. But when we drove past, the security guard goes, oh, hey, guys, do you mind if we go back down? And then the ABC guy was like, oh, why is that? She, and he turns around and goes, well, uh, that lady said uh, – if you can go back around and drive in this way, and they've got the ABC guys go, go uh, uh, which lady is it? And he looks over and goes, oh, you see that fat one over there? No. <laughs> and the look on the uh, guys from, you know, Oz were like, edit, edit, I edit, cannot edit. believe you just said that. But he kind of said it so casually. Yeah. But, you know, that's just the cultural yeah. difference. Yes. And no one, no one really, if you call someone fat in the village, yeah, they're, they're yeah. just like, oh, compliment. <laughs> I'm, yeah. he I'm healthy and I'm eating. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been eating, I'm, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got food. Yeah, <laughs> so that you know that different type, di different type of mentality is. I find that so fascinating every time I'm there. The, yeah. the whole safety thing. Yes, the body image. I mean, it's, I guess it's different cultural yeah. uh, perceptions and ways of living, but yeah. I always have fun with you know that type of stuff going back there. <laughs> and I'm sure you you'll notice it more. The more you now, back to yeah, now that you, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of like things that we did differently, but like while we were in camp, but 
you kind of just there and yeah no yeah. it was more of just like enduring each other's company and just laughing and laughing and laughing <laughs> um where's the dad where's your dad from yeah. um my dad was born in lay which is a funny story because i you know you do get to know you get to know the players and things like that and i kept saying like oh you know i'm from lay which is more motor bay um like uh, motor bay Mor- yeah too. yeah um, and the girls would always call me like, oh, the motivated lady, like, or Mary. <laughs> Mary means lady. Um, and when they did the get to know me, I went back to my, like, grandmother and where she was born. And then they were like, you're not Morabe. They're like, you're Sipic. Like, it's like, because, you know, when you hear, you're like, I'm born in Brisbane. Yeah. So you say, oh, I'm, from, I'm from Brisbane, I'm born in Brisbane. And so I was, I'd be saying the same thing about my dad. I'm like, oh, my dad's from like born in Lay, but they're like, no, your blood is sipic. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then, and then they kept oh, like so his his parents, his his family. Yeah, yeah, like my grand grandmother and and my grandfather. They had, my grandfather was born in Lay, but my grandmother was born in Sipic, and they kind of ran with that one. <laughs> and um, I remember my roomie Leela, she's also Sipic, and to her that was like the craziest thing like she found that like bond with me through my blood being sipic yeah like, oh everyone's my, everyone's very proud yeah of where they're from yeah yeah she actually like punched me out of excitement <laughs> <laughs> i was like what um and yeah, then instant rapport right there yeah, yeah like she's like you're sipic stop saying you're motivated like <laughs> and then um i remember walking up the stairs like we come home from training and i don't on, on the field i I, they they, they kind of made out that I was a different person when I was on the field because when I'm off I'm like quite like quite soft and gentle and you know and and one of the girls was walking up the stairs with me and she's like yeah you're definitely sipping <laughs> and I was like <laughs> yeah that, that aggression <laughs> that, that <laughs> anger is from <laughs> <laughs> and I said what do you mean and then yeah exactly what you said and then she said yeah like they don't care they're like they're like real tough people in in the in that region and then and I went, what about off the field? And she went, nah, no, no, <laughs> off the field, opposite. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, you can kind of say that about, you know, anyone really yeah. aggressive on the field. and oh, Not everyone is like that, but yeah. But given that, like, I, I was, you know, raised in Australia to like, to have that said about me kind of made me feel a little bit proud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a cool experience. What was her name? Um, um, Pochi. That okay. one that said that. And then my roomie, Leela. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and moving forward, do you want to play a few more games for Orchids, I'd imagine? Yeah, definitely. I'd love to hopefully get another World Cup in um, over in France. That would yeah. be the next goal. I mean, I did write a two-year plan, and you know about that because we did train on that one-year mark. Yep. <laughs> Just um, yeah. some extra drilling from yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I did. That was my two-year plan was because obviously I spoke to you about it, but I was transitioning from center and I really wanted to play fullback. That was my goal is to be kind of recognized as a fullback. So making that transition from that position and then going down the park with you and learning little bits from the crew that we had there, like the boys that were there with us and just taking in as much information as I could. And then that goal was – to get that position and then going into lucky enough to get named. And when I did, he then said, you know, there's that opportunity for you to play fullback. So kind of ticked off that that goal of mine, which I set two years ago. So I was just really proud of myself for that. And and then, yeah, like I wanted to learn how to kick as well. And I'd never done it before. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I might as well just learn. And the only way you do that is by going down to the field and doing that. I could just repetition and then in that pm's game i was lucky enough to get that duty of you know look, kicking the ball over the post and yeah like yeah. like these little goals of mine i've slowly achieved and i'm i still have such a list and yeah yeah obviously like you've got your setbacks and things like that with injuries which is like inevitable with contact sport um but it's just about you know keep on keep taking those steps forward and doing those little extras like going down with you and you know the stuff that they don't see is probably what counts the most I think yeah I think that, that stuff's so important it's uh, you know the goals you set you know you got to see it mm-hmm. in my opinion my, my belief mm-hmm. 
you're going to see it and then you're going to do a lot of boring stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to enjoy it, mm -hmm. but a lot of the time, I think 50% or more, you, you're probably not going to want to do it. Yeah. You're going to feel bored or distractions get in the way. Injuries happen, like you said, they're, they're inevitable. Mm -hmm. But just the whole repetition game and you know, quality repetition is always a slight difference there mm -hmm. in terms of just going and just, you know, getting mm -hmm. the reps in or you're there to get the proper reps in. Yes. I find they're the guys who are uh, at the next level compared to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was pretty proud, to be honest, watching uh, you and Therese take the field because that was our crew <laughs> in preseason. Uh, you know, I think it poured down rain and – Water was like you know, <laughs> yeah. up to there at our, our feet. One of the sessions, um, it was boiling hot because it's December, January. Mm -hmm. You you know toughed it out, and then we're in the orchids jerseys at the end of the year. So we did pretty cool, hey. Well, yeah, we did speak about that. We 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 didn't put any emphasis on it because we didn't want to put any pressure on ourselves. Therese and I we were kind of just there, like you said, like just doing the stuff that you. If you have a goal, like you're gonna you're gonna go out and enjoy what you're doing, like and we kind of just rocked up as if like it was something fun to do and yeah. you know and then what comes of that is just the bonus and then like you said we both got to pull on a png orchids jersey so. yeah it's so cool <laughs> um yeah i was watching on the sideline going man it's pretty cool to see do the preseason and then representing png uh, i'm sure there'll be many more preseasons to come because the crew's been messaging me saying when are we back yes <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just the, I, th I can't emphasize it enough to, you know, maybe I think some of the girls listening out there that you just got to, you got to train mm -hmm. and the more you train, the better you get, the, the better your chances are of representing PNG mm -hmm. or representing the orchids mm -hmm. or Jillaroos in any other country. Mm -hmm. You just got to work harder than everyone else and yeah. make sure they're quality training sessions. Definitely. Yeah. And I think it's good if you can find a support system. That's all, like, that's interested in the same goal, I guess, because when you do that, it it just takes, the pre like, you know, that pressure off and you just got to enjoy it. Yeah. Like, when you're trying to achieve that and putting in the hard work, like, you've got to enjoy it, otherwise you're not going to want to do it. Yeah. Um, so, I yeah, certainly agree. finding that support system that, yeah, want to achieve the same things as you. Yeah, definitely agree. It. I think we had a pretty good crew. We did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Shay, as we wrap up the podcast now, I'd like to throw off a few rapid-fire questions. Oh, gosh. Answer them as short as you like, as long as you like. Okay. Favourite meal? You can't do that. that that's <laughs> a hard – like, you just started with the first hardest one. To, first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> Favourite meal? Um, seafood. Anything seafood. Yep. Music? Or like a surf and turf. A oh, surf and turf. Mm. That's a – is that steak and – Yeah. The best prawns? Of yeah. <laughs> I remember that's, that was my go-to pub meal, I think. Yep. Yeah. Um, favorite music? You do not want to check my Spotify. It can go from one end to the other. Yeah, that's, like, that's like my <laughs> everything list, except yeah. for Screamo. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Screamo fans. Favorite movie of all time? <sighs> oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> my head's like this, <laughs> like <The> Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Favorite movie, Meaty? <laughs> Lion King. The Lion King of all time. Really? Nothing comes close, yeah. Why is that? I think I don't know. Just the, uh, I, I think I've watched it about you know, at least twenty times, <laughs> at least maybe more. Actually, and it's just I've always got one. I love quoting it. Yeah, you've now got, that you've said that, yeah. you've watched it a million times. Um, the Little Rascals, I could yes. watch that. Like, yeah, that was a good. Yeah, that was a good childhood movie. That yes, one. <laughs> good choice. If there's a billboard up there and Shay. De La Cruz can put a sign on it. Mm -hmm. What would be on there? Sunsets. So, <laughs> yeah. There you go, yeah, you, you can have a free cocktail up there, Shay. Thank you. For that shout out. <laughs> um, Shay, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for uh, having I know you were pretty nervous before this and you said you hadn't had much media training, so I do appreciate you getting out of your comfort zone. It's my first, first one. First, first ever podcast. Yes. I'm sure it won't be the last. Thanks and me. you know, if, if you make it bigger than the media, you can claim the yeah. first training session. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Shay. Really appreciate you being on. Thank here. you for having me. I appreciate it. It's pretty.